Hello and welcome back everybody. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to build your own Linux distribution using Kiwi. And using Kiwi you can build yourself Scent, you can build yourself Debian, Fedora, SUSE, Ubuntu, a lot of the big name brandy Linuxes. There is a very large use case for this. Ever since they turned off SUSE Studio, it's been a little bit rough to build your own version of SUSE. However, Kiwi has always been the back end to SUSE Studio and is actually very easy to use. Step one, let's download the packages and install Kiwi. I strongly recommend you do this from an open SUSE distribution already. So, if you need to run a VM, you can build an OS and a VM, but that's silly. So you should dual boot or install OpenSUSE on one of your machines and go ahead and install Kiwi and download this repository, which will be in the description. Through them on my desktop, here we are. Okay, let's pop open a terminal. CD to yaw. Okay, just to show you what packages I already have installed, go ahead and duplicate similar setup to this so that you'll have the Kiwi tools. And for those that are curious, this is OpenSUSE 15. Ta-da! So let's drill down into this OpenSUSE one. You have different architectures you can build for um, and various versions of SUSE you can build. Let's start with the just enough OS of SUSE 15. You'll see a couple files inside. There's a config.xml. If you take a look at this, it's uh, mostly a package list of which packages are installed. So I could copy this line here, paste it here, delete that data and put in uh, let's say if I wanted it to come with Kiwi tools, I could put Kiwi tools right in there. And you know what, let's go ahead and leave it just like that so that it will add the Kiwi tools. And there's a couple other pieces of data that are important in this file, like our target is going to be ISO and it's going to support UEFI boot. Um, also it has a name. So here you could name your distribution or your modified distribution. Uh, and then the config.sh file is an incredibly important file. After the installer installs the packages from your config.xml file, it's going to call your config.sh script. And in here you can set up user accounts or do any like Linuxy things. You can turn on services for automatic startup in this file. You can really do anything you want. So step one is it's going to parse out this XML file and install all of these packages inside of essentially a chew root. It's going to give it a certain name and stuff. Um, but once it's done creating the basic root file system for your distribution, it will call this configuration script. And this configuration script can turn off services, it can RM directories, make users, do any Linuxy things that you want done to your distribution before the user ever sees it. Let's say you wanted to add a file automatically to the root file system of your distribution. Well, it's, it's just an overlay right here. Anything you put in here will end up in your distro. So. If you wanted to include some systemd configs, we could add a systemd folder and then a system folder and add some systemd config files that way. You can include like Etsy skeleton and have a default user home directory uh, structure that gets added to new users. Um, there's really a lot you can do. It's This is the root file system of your distribution.
But yeah, so that's kind of the main tools. You've got a file that contains which packages are included. You've got this directory structure, which contains all the files that you want to include that aren't part of RPM packages. And you've got your config script that will be called and modify everything by a command line. So you put all those together and you end up with a distro. So building is the next important stage. After you've tweaked the config file and the XML file and you've got your stuff in place, how do you actually build the thing? Well, I'm going to look at the documentation and just show you the documentation because that's a pretty lengthy command. All right, so here's the actual command. So let's go back one directory and then from here we'll run kiwi and g minus minus type iso that means we want an iso image not like a virtual box disk image or the like it's going to be an actual iso and install iso system build so there's actually three options here there's the build the create and there's another one basically one creates the the distro's root file system and the other will actually create the ISO built does both so we're gonna I almost always use just build so minus minus description kiwi kiwi susa x86 susa leap oh wait we don't want leap we want no, we do want leap 15. Okay, there we go. Then we want dash dash target directory gets slash TMP slash uh, my distro. Okay, so very lengthy command, but once we run that command, it's literally going to download RPMs and install RPMs and a true root and copy over my root file system thing and call that config script. In the end, it's going to yield a .iso that we can play with. Oh yes, so there was this small bug that I had to correct when I was working on my distro as well. Can't find GFX boot. To fix this, we just need to include the right GFX boot stuff. So here's the issue um, with the default repository at the moment. It's set up to use GFX branding OpenSUSE. We want to get rid of this. The downside to this is you'll have a slightly ugly boot screen. I don't see that as a big issue personally, so default grub is fine. It needs a unique path every time, so since we've already used my distro, we need my distro too. And we wait again. It has created the live ISO for us to test out. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this to my desktops. CP this ISO to right here. Okay. Let's open up Oracle. We're going to add the ISO image to a VM just to make sure that it works. All right, and this is the ugly screen I was talking about. The OpenSUSE branded screen isn't there or isn't working by default for whatever reason. Um, but I thought the ugly blue grub screen was actually sort of cute in its own way. And there you have it, your very own custom Linux ISO. If you're in the user camp of sad that OpenSUSE Studio has closed down, don't be so sad. It's pretty easy to use Kiwi to build your custom distributions via the command line. So if you're a Linux user who's not afraid of the command line, but misses SUSE Studio, Kiwi is amazing. I use it to build my distribution called Chimera. And that's kind of in pre-alpha E stage right now, but you can download the Kiwi files today and build if you want. So take a look at the description if you want to see my distribution, also built with Kiwi. Happy Kiwi Inc. Bye.